name is Shazlin Yuanyu Pastor, and I'm this year's cultural director of Kasamahan at USF. This year's barrio theme is Bukiki Sama, and this being my second term, I really thought of what can we do to commemorate the past, present, and future generations of our organization, considering the fact that it's our 45th barrio fiesta. And I couldn't think of a theme. I knew the feeling I wanted, but I didn't, nothing really clicked to me until I was in Ate Professor Barbara Jane Reyes's uh, YPSP class. And she was describing this idea of Bayanihan um, and barangays and that sense of community. And she described the word Pakikisama as the, the feeling or the idea of people coming together and the different values that they can contribute to a community. And at that moment, it clicked for me where that's what I feel when I'm in this organization. That's what I feel when I'm with my group of friends um, is because this is what the community has given me. And I knew straight off the bat, it's what I wanted when I even asked my Lola, I said, Mama, what does Bukikisama mean? And she goes, you already do it. Um, and I was like, what do you mean? She said, you already do it in Kasamahan. It's your group of friends that come together. It's that camaraderie. It's that feeling of belonging. And even if there's tension, you always find a way to come together because of the Bukikisama that has been built and continues to grow. You know, makibaka, beauty and strength in the struggle. My name is Erna Cruz Levy. I'm the Executive Director of American Center of Philippine Arts. I'm also the Philippine Rendalia and Percussion Instructor for Barrio Fiesta 2018. Uh, Philippine Rendalia is the ensemble of string instruments um, of the various mandolins of the Philippines, um, and that is the banduria, that is the laud, the octavina, as well as the guitarra and the bass. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the Philippine Rendalia has been around for many, many years since the um, colonization of the Spanish. And uh, the Filipinos basically took those instruments and made it our very own. So we are very honored to be able to bring it here to Barrio Fiesta at University of San Francisco. Hi, I'm Lala. I'm Angela. And we're choir directors, directors for Barrio 2018. 2018. We are singing the two anthems for Philippines and... America. Because we're proud of both our cultures and our dual identities as Filipino Americans and college students. So we really want to represent that and we're honored to start the show with those two anthems. We came up with a short medley um, and it all uh, goes with the theme of Pakikisama, which is, you know, togetherness and camaraderie and unity. And so we um, put together the songs. Um, the intro from Paramedic. Second You'll one. Be In My Heart. You'll Be In My Heart from Tarzan. Uh, Umbrella by Rihanna and... I'll Be There by Michael Jackson. Yeah. So when you hear us later, you should listen to the lyrics of the songs mm -hmm. because that's what really guided our choices. Hi, I'm Kayla. I am a senior and I am one of the skit directors this year. Hi, my name is Kiko Valle. Uh, I'm too also a senior and I'm one of the directors for Skip this year. I'm Matthew Molino, I'm a junior, and I'm the third director of Skip this year. The skits are about several different groups of people and how they are all able to find some kind of common ground. The meaning, or at least the definition, that we as an organization decided to focus on for this production is the idea of coming together. Each set of characters is presented with their own set of tri like trials and challenges in which they have to like literally come together to overcome, like they can't just do it by themselves. Which is, I feel like, a really big idea like in Kasamahan and in Barrio, like there's like always like, you're, you're always gonna have to collaborate, you're always gonna have to work with others in order to sort of find the greater good or, you know, get the best result out of like any challenge that comes our way. There's honestly a lot of power and beauty in coming together and that's really just what we wanted to evoke in these skits this year. Skit is considered the heart of Barrio, and I think like when coming up with these stories, the reason why it's considered the heart of Barrio is because it comes from us. You know what I mean? Like the dances are passed down to us, but we create Skit. Like through our personal experiences, the experiences of our loved ones and our friends and like people that we know who are all going through the same thing. We like literally came together just to express our narratives. You're not in this alone. You know, 
it feels so lonely sometimes. And if you feel that way and you're in this audience, you know, I hope these skits speak to you and you can see that you're not alone. A lot of us share these experiences and you have people there for you. Growing up as a Filipino American, like it's always hard to find those things in like mainstream entertainment in which you relate to, but then like when we put out these skits, it's like it's putting us on stage. Um, I want people to take away like a sense of inspiration, a sense of my being like represented. With the stories this year, I especially want the older generation of Filipinos in general to take away sort of an understanding of like where the younger generation is coming from in terms of like how we deal with identity struggles as well as the overall generational gap between ourselves and our older relatives. A lot of Filipino American kids are very uncomfortable when it comes to sort of discussing these things with their older relatives because of just like they're afraid they won't understand or they're afraid that like they'll never like see it their way but with these skits I feel it really puts it in a perspective in which a lot of people can understand it. I kind of would want to extend an invitation um, to all of you who are going to be watching tonight, find yourself in these characters. Look for yourself. Find a character that you relate to, a character that you see yourself in, or find a character that you think is very different from you and find common ground with them. I hope that after watching these skits, you recognize what you can bring to the table because I think a lot of people hesitate to come together as a group because they feel like they're not adequate enough. But hopefully after watching these skits, it'll be a really good reminder um, or encouragement to know that who you are and what you are is enough and that you can come together to the bigger group and what you have to offer is valuable. It started with an idea where San Francisco professionals and San Francisco fitness coaches can come together to build community and education. I think Perform for Life is that perfect mixture of professionalism, continued education, having staff and coaches who really know their stuff, as well as a place that you feel the love, you feel the energy, and you really feel that sense of community and belonging. After a while, you realize you're looking for that custom experience, that personality, that sense where there's community on top of doing the workout. From day one all the way to four years later, that's only continued to grow and continue to be more amazing. A lot of one-on-one -on -one gyms have it where you just come in, you do your session, you get done with your trainer, and you take a shower and you get out of there. In a city that is very individual and everyone's kind of doing their own thing, working hard, it's cool to provide another opportunity for people to get together, people to find some sort of commonality. Someone's giving you their keys to their body. If you're an athlete, if you're someone who's had injuries, if you're someone who's never worked out in your life, you're coming here and putting the trust in us, we're gonna make you feel at home. I think that's part of the magic, is that the team has so much passion for what they do and for the people they serve. And I feel like you could even see that looking out the windows and looking in. Mine on the road, your dilated eyes Watch the clouds float, white Ferrari Had a good time How was I supposed to know anything? I let you out at Central 
I didn't care to state the plain Kept my mouth closed We're both so familiar White Ferrari Stick a close by me You were fine You were fine As this still slow by Left when I forget to speak so I text the speech, less the speeds, text the speed, yes. Basic takes its toll on me eventually, eventually, yes. I on me eventually, eventually, yes. I care for you still and I will forever. That was my part of the deal. Honest, we got so familiar Spending each day of the year White Ferrari Good times In this life In this So I'm choreographing to the song uh, Yay Area, also Tell Me When I Go by the artist E40. And the reason why I chose this song is because um, even though I'm born and raised in LA, like ever since I came to the Bay, like their vibe and kind of just their whole outlook is just very like hyphy and like let's get down. Like in LA, I feel like the music isn't as like upbeat. So that's the reason why I'm choreographing to it, just because I love the Bay and I've been living it for four years. I'm Mari. I'm a sophomore choreographing the hip hop piece. Um, I chose to choreograph to Tell Me When I Go by E40 because obviously it's the Bay Area. And then I also chose September, which has a little spin in it. And I chose that because it's every Filipino's favorite song. Hi, I'm Tyler. Hi, I'm Stefan. We're doing medley. <laughs> we chose the song My Boo and Boyfriend acoustic version. Um, because we wanted to do a kind of like light, playful piece between two partners um, and we just thought those songs would correctly represent that. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Jessica. And, and we're, we're choreographing, choreographing Medley. medley. <laughs> okay. We chose Maria Maria by Santana. And Wild Thoughts by Rihanna. And then Who's Stopping Me by Big Sean. Because all of those had kind of like a Latin flair to them and we really wanted to make it pretty like spicy. <laughs> My name is Samantha David. I'm choreographing contemporary. The song we're using is Sa Ugoi Nang Duyan. And I wanted to pick a song that would be meaningful to our parents because we are dedicating this dance to them and thanking them for all they've done for us. So enjoy. Raya, do you want a bottle? I'm hungry. Potato. Where is it? Oh, there, this one. And then, it's fine. Oh, no. It's not. Ooh, they're mangoes. Ah, oh, it's good, huh? There's that. How'd you fit this in there? Oh, it's good. Oh, I thought you can be. Oh, okay. It's fine. It's fine. Hi, I'm Eric with Paranormal Dance Company. And my name is Balta Galicia, and I'm also with the Paranormal Dance Company. So the, our dances are derived from the Taoso culture, or pe uh, Taoso people uh, of the Philippines. Um, Taoso is from the Sulu archipelago, um, and Taoso means uh, people of the currents. Taoso dances that we're teaching here at the Samahan, 
They're actually uh, taught by um, Auntie Ling Ling or Siti Ubeso. She is Tau um, Suk, but she's now living in um, Davao City in Mindanao. So her um, the dances that she's taught us are pretty much, uh, of course, based on the dance form called Pangalai, which is uh, exclusive of the Tau um, Suk uh, people of the Philippines. So the dances will consist of uh, martial arts. Of course, the Pangalai dance um, itself, um, if you see the various movements, um, the term for that is Bunga Lima, and also the new dance that we taught here for the first time at uh, Kasamahan is the, called the Palikat, and this is basically um, showing the various ways to wear the Palikat, or the Patajong, or Malo. You will also see um, the bride and the groom, um, how that takes place uh, for the Tuxu people in that, in that ritual. There will be also songs um, that will be fully performed as well. And the last piece will be uh, concluded by Pangalai Kapadui, meaning um, dancing Pangalai using the Banig. So the Banig um, consists of or portrays uh, pretty much the livelihood of the Tuxu people and also um, how, how they are made because um, they're also used to give birth and of course that's where we sleep on not just in the uh, Tuxu people but also with the entire uh, people of the Philippines. My name is Micaela Tandinko and I'm choreographing Binailan. Binailan is in the Lumad suite which is also known as the indigenous suite. Binailan tells the story of a mama hen and her chicks. The chicks are called Banook. And basically the mama hen leads and guides the chicks and then a hawk comes and attacks the chicks. And then hunters come and attack the hawk. And that's the basic story. My name is Jasmine Pastor. I am lucky to be the cultural director this year. And one of my dances I'm choreographing is called Dagabili. And that's going to be in the Lumat Suite. And the Lumat Suite means indigenous. Um, so it can range to a lot of dances. Uh, and for my particular dance with Dagabili, I'm inspired and restaging Barangals. Dagabili, which comes from Southwest Mindanao, Southern Philippines, um, from South Cotabato. And the story comes from the idea um, that a prince is jealous because his one of his wives falls in love with his brother and there's a whole fight and there's a preparation for a wedding and next thing you know there's a curse on the village and everyone dies but they um, but just for my dance I'm taking the section of the preparation of the wedding where the princess is about to be married to the prince and the sisters are getting ready. So I'm taking the lively, happy part of the whole story just to share on stage. So it's an all-female dance and I just wanted to share that on stage um, and represent that this is one of the stories that's happening. Hi, my name is Maylene. I'm choreographing Dugso, which um, is from the Lumad Suite. The Dugso is usually a prayer of thanksgiving and invocation for protection. So there's typically girls who are dressed in um, feather headdresses, and one of them offers um, an offering, and it's usually an offering with a fire. And the fire is lit in belief that this book will carry um, the offering up to the gods. This dance is traditionally danced during Kalingas, which is feasts, and when there is going to be um, a, the birth of a male heir in the community. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello? Where are you? Oh, Saan ka? Saan? Huh? Where are you sitting? I can't hear you. Wait. Oh. I told you I'm getting my popcorn. In the front. Oh, okay. Sige, sige. I'm talking on the phone. Huh? What happened? Where's my wallet? What? I'm about to pay. I'm about to oh, pay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Bye. Sweetie, the Lord is. Andre, mega pass and foron. Do you love me unconditionally? That's what it means. Of course. You're how I wish I am. It's been weeks. Don't make me wait to see you again. You know I can't stay in one place too long. 
Let me come with you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't care. I do. Rose, Rose, look at me. Is everything all right? Rose, Rose. Rose, Rose, Rose! Look, we just haven't found a solution. I have! You're holding yourself back. Listen to me. Summer's ending. It'll be less daytime, more evening. It'll be good for you. Hi, my name is Abby. I'm choreographing Monmonok, which is a part of the Mountain or Cordillera Suite. And Monmonok is basically a dance that mimics fowls or chickens. It features tribal um, roosters from the Bago tribe. The tribal blankets in the dance represent the colorful plumage of the male chickens as they try to impress the maiden hen, also known as Lady Leanne. The dance itself is a celebratory dance. Um, weddings, birthdays, the birth of a child is uh, when they would do this dance. The movements in the dance, they're mainly mimicking birds flying down. I'm RJ Gabriel. I'm a senior at the University of San Francisco. I am Filipino American. I am a marketing major. While I'm working, I want to go into grad school. So I'll be working while doing school at the same time so I could climb the ladder later. Maybe in my 50s, 60s, go into politics or become a professor. Basically, or bow means a coconut shell, and that's I feel like a prop that we use in our dance. It's very very memorable. So this dance originally was performed in Binan, which is in the Laguna province of the Philippines, and it's a dance that pretty much depicts kind of like a war scene or like a fight between the Moros and the Christians, and this is depicted in the dance with the colored pants that they wear. Moros wear red and the Christians wear blue. What the Moros and the Christians are fighting over is what's called the latik. And the latik is this residue that you get after you cook the coconut. So after you cook it or you boil it, whatever's left is this highly prized resource that the Moros and the Christians are fighting over. We're, We're choreographing Vinasuan, <laughs> um, and it's part of the barrio suite. And a, like some context that's about it, Benesuan means with the use of drinking glasses and it is from the Pangasinan province and it's normally danced at weddings or huge parties. And normally everybody has big wine cups filled with wine and then they do the techniques and tricks that we, and balancing tricks. With that we really fast paced music. 
Mm-hmm. Hey everyone, my name is Mark and I'm the choreographer for Teninkling. Teninkling is in the Barrio Suite and a little bit of context history behind that is that back in the olden days or just like back then, there was these tickling birds and these birds would steal the food of the farmers and the farmers, they had enough. So they decided to set these bamboo traps to prevent the tickling birds from stealing their food. Teninkling eventually became one of the most um, historic and memorable dances and famous dances of the Philippines. So in this dance, the dancers imitate the grace and beauty of the tinkling birds um, while two other people clap the sticks. So people are dancing and while there's clapping, basically imitating the tinkling birds as they try to, you know, prevent from getting clapped. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a ball, there's a ball. I'm gonna take a picture. Okay, no flash though, Dada. But if there's no flash, I can't see. If I did not stand, we wouldn't get this picture. Look how nice he looks, huh? Mm-hmm. It's a pretty good picture. Mm-hmm. For Facebook. <laughs> hey, what time's barrio practice? Why would I know? Let me go check then. I think it's at five. Can you check what time it is right now? Oh snap! Filipino time. Hi, uh, my name is Kayla and I am choreographing for the Maria Clara Suite. So the Maria Clara Suite is greatly inspired by Spanish colonization of the Philippines because the Spanish were, t- um, or they had taken over the Philippines for like 400 years or so. Um, and there's a really, really popular book that was written by someone who was in the Philippines and there's a character named Maria Clara and she was like the definition of beauty and grace and so everyone wanted to emanate her and so that's what this suite is about. It's about like the time in the Philippines where we really wanted to emanate the beauty of Spanish culture. Hi, my name is Mackie Bella, and I'm choreographing Eskrima. In a historical context, Eskrima is a martial arts that evolved in the Philippines during the um, Spanish colonialization. It was practiced to, for self-defense and um, to keep the, the war arts, the martial arts of the Philippines alive under the Spanish rule, which was um, an oppressive rule and it prohibited weapons and martial arts. It reflects um, rebellion and resilience and the fighting spirit of the Filipino people. Hi, I'm James. Um, I'm also choreographing with Tiana Valerio and we are choreographing Sina Kiki. Sina Kiki comes from a region called Rapu Rapu Island and they're known for very lively fiestas. Um, Sina Kiki is a rooster dance. It's about the male roosters going after their counterparts, their female counterparts, and the females are just kind of running away, not really paying much attention to them. Um, It's a very fun, very sassy dance. The dance that I'm choreographing is called Paseo de Ilo Ilo. So it's a courtship dance. So basically the story of it is that there is a young woman who is just kind of walking by a group of three young men. She (laughs) catches their eye and they are all very awestruck by her and they're all like, I want to impress her, I want to court her. And so the dance is kind of a competition between the three guys to see who can most impress the young woman and who will win the girl, we will find out at the end of the dance. So my dance is Lanceros de Tayabas.
Lanceros de Tayabas is a, a dance that is akin to chivalrous knights, uh, as Lanceros suggests. And more or less, it's done at um, big celebrations, um, weddings, parties, stuff like that. Um, and it's just really more or less, I guess, guys with their girls. <laughs> Are you excited for Mario? I am excited for Mario. Hell yeah. All right. You know, Rhea, I think your dress was nicer than that one. They probably just got that at Macy's or something. Speak louder! I'm, I'm helping them. It's fine, Anna. The Moro Suite comes from the southern part of the Philippines. Um, Moro was a was actually a derogatory term for um, the Muslim people who lived in the Philippines. Um, but then they reclaim that name, and so, um, you know, they call themselves um, the Moro. The Moro Suite is also known as the Muslim Suite. It's from Mindanao, and it showcases a lot of the royalty dances. My dance is called Silong Sagandingan. It is a dance that um, is emphasized in the wrist, so it's like the gracefulness of the flick of the wrist. Typically, it's a dance of four women um, that represent the gandings, which are, um, it's a type of instrument um, in the Moro suite um, of four gongs that are hanging on a stand, um, and it's supposed to mimic the sound of conversation. So in my dance, there are six girls, uh, the princess, um, her, her right hand, and then the four dancers that represent the ganding, or the people that are talking about the princess. and. Um, yeah, I think it's really cool. It plays into um, the story of the wedding of the princess and the prince. I'm Mikaela. I'm Aileen. And um, we're doing a sik. The sik is usually the dance that precedes sing kill, which is the dance with the princess and the prince. And a sik is performed by the solo maiden who wins the favor of the sultan master, who is also technically the prince. A sik is the solo slave dance that is performed by the umbrella bearing attendant, who happens to be Jaslyn. And um, she usually wears long fingernails with uh, metal fingernails. With called Jungai. Jungai. And then she dances in very doll like motions. My dance is Sinkil and it is in the suite of the Moro Muslim suite. Sinkil is a courtship dance. Sinkil comes from the Durangan legend which comes from southern Mindanao and it's the idea that you know a prince and a princess are courting but at the same time nature is wrecking havoc and there's an earthquake and trees are falling uh, so the dance depicts the princess and the prince going through the um, traps set on by the different diwatas, um, the gods, and they come together in marriage.